Well, as we build up towards the massive Old Firm game on Sunday, probably the biggest Old Firm game in well over a decade, we're going to talk a little bit about the appointment of the referee for the game and a bit of a concern over that referee. Um, isn't it ridiculous, though, that, we're, that the referee again is taking centre stage rather than two teams going for a title? Also, we're going to discuss some off-field criticism of Scott Wright this time with comments that Scott's made that have been criticised by certain Rangers fan sites, um, saying that, again, it's players doing their talking off the field rather than on it. I'd love to get your view on that. And we're also going to talk about the fact that Rangers are reportedly interested in doing a permanent deal for Fabio Silva, but... Uh, many people within the media and obviously as well within uh, those in the know are casting doubts over Rangers being able to afford even a cut price fee for the young Portuguese star. But before we talk all things Rangers, before we talk referees, before we talk Fabio Silva and Scott Wright, I want to give a massive, massive shout out to my good buddy Damien Hendry, who you've seen on this podcast. Damien Hendry, the guy who sings on the Match Day Mix, uh, the famous RFC, and of course, Four Lads Had a Dream. Guys, you'll all have heard it if you've been to Ibrox. And obviously, you've heard about his band Sleep Image and what they do, the phenomenal way. He has now released his a track on his own um, called The Bluest Sea. Um, it's brilliant. It's absolutely fantastic. It's on all major platforms. I was listening on Spotify whilst I was walking the dog earlier. It's on YouTube. I will drop a link to the uh, video and to Damien's uh, YouTube page. Please subscribe, guys. The song is Rangers themed. There's lots of Rangers hints in there without actually saying the word Rangers. Uh, Slimpy the Best, uh, for example, we will follow on and things like that. The song is absolutely amazing, guys. It is one of the best songs I have heard this year by far. It knocks the likes of Taylor Swift. It knocks the likes of Harry Styles. It knocks the likes of, I don't know, what's that woman called again? Uh, the one who did Houdini. I can't remember her name now. Random weird name. Um, it knocks the likes of Lizzo. It knocks the likes of everyone in two next week, into next year. It is that good a song, guys. Give it a listen. I'll drop a link in the description. Blue Sea by Damien Hendry. Absolutely phenomenal, guys. Give it a listen. Okay, so let's talk about Rangers things. Yes, guess what? Yes, the old firm game is coming up. So guess what? Referees start to rear their ugly heads again. Now, look, I think we can all kind of admit that the standard of refereeing in Scotland is pretty, pretty poor. It is, well, actually, it's a little bit worse than poor. It's pretty horrific. And, you know, the issue I think a lot is around about part-time referees, about referees not being full-time, about accountability, et cetera, et cetera. Not the same standards as down south, yada, yada, yada. Not good. But... We know, though, that once again, they across the city, the Celtic, will be sowing their narrative that they never get anything, the Rangers get all the decisions, the referees don't like them, that they don't get anything, it's not fair, the referees give Rangers soft penalties, that Rangers get soft decisions, that Rangers players don't get sent off, yada, yada, yada. That will be sown all week to raise the pressure on the match official because that's what they did before the last old firm game and obviously you know you look back at that last old firm game three players who should have been got second yellow cards didn't get them there was the whole Abdallah Seema Michael uh, uh, Sadila Johnston thing with the handball and was it not a handball VAR the offside yeah the all that crap that went on lots of things obviously went on in that game the Kamar Roof goal that was disallowed again before that game we get the narrative again the Rangers get decisions Rangers get soft goals Rangers get soft penalties blah 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 and we're going to hear it this week we know it it's it's as predictable as the fact it's going to rain in Scotland, that's as, that's how predictable it is. Now, the match official for, for Sunday afternoon's game is John Beaton. Now, you probably have heard John Beaton's name in the media very recently. Why have we heard John Beaton's name in the media recently? I hear you ask for those of you who can't remember why his name has been in the media recently. Well, it was in the, in the media recently because he was the VAR official that... Uh, obviously was labelled as incompetent by one Brendan Rodgers, uh, which then led to Brendan Rodgers getting a one match. Yes, just one match where most ref most managers get two to three match bans, but we'll leave that there. We'll park that one. Um, he was labelled incompetent. 
by jo by Brendan Rodgers. He was, uh, you know, Brendan Rodgers cast doubts on his ability to referee fairly, all because of the sending off of that Japanese, Chinese, Korean, whatever he was, player from Celtic who nearly smashed the kick the head off the Hearts player. Yes, but apparently it was not violent conduct. There was nothing wrong with it, and the referee is utterly incompetent, according to Brendan Rodgers. Hmm. Yes, Brendan. Okay, whatever, Brendan. But the appointment of John Beaton has automatically raised concerns on actually both sides of the old firm. Obviously, Celtic have already started the narrative about John Beaton being incompetent, John Beaton giving decisions against them, John Beaton being against them, John Beaton being, uh, been involved in the whole conspiracy, Rangers conspiracy, yada, yada, yada. That's all been put out there again. Now, we knew that was going to happen. Now, I'm not saying it's Celtic Football Club. It is very much the fans at this moment in time. And obviously the pundits, the Celtic, the pro Celtic pundits, your Suttons, your Michael Stewart's, your, your Neil Lend, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, who will be spinning this this line. However, Craig Moore talking on Go Radio uh, said that you know he's very much under the fear though that it could actually act the other way, with Beaton feeling the pressure again against him not to give decisions that are perhaps you know 50-50 in favour of Rangers or that are. Decisions likely to cost Celtic a player, cost Celtic a penalty, etc., etc., because of the pressure he is being put under before the game because of these comments made by Brendan Rodgers initially. Now, this is all conspiracy theory. We know this. It's what happens before old firm games. And I'm sure John Beaton will referee the game absolutely superbly. I've got no doubt in my mind. He will be brilliant. Um, you know, absolutely fantastic. But it's in the cheek guys um okay so look at the end of the day look it, it's for me it's a sad state of affairs when you know going towards like i said one of the biggest old firm games in over a decade what is becoming the topic of conversation again who is all the pressure and, and the limelight going on to the referee and it's wrong it's wholly wrong for me again it's part of this whole narrative that i spoke about on sunday i think it was when i spoke about michael stewart and i spoke about pundits in scotland you know turning the game into a pantomime rather than a serious discussion over football and as i said carragher and neville don't particularly like each other's teams but they give a fair assessment of each other's teams they don't go as one-eyed they don't go as biased and I'm not, and I'm, and I'm including chris boyd in this comedy comments as well so don't think i'm being you know um totally anti-Celtic. Yes, I am anti-Celtic. Of course I am. I hate them. But at the end of the day, they're making Scottish football look stupid. And again, it's down again to this referee's blah, blah, blah. It's it's making our game look daft. And it's wrong. It's wholly wrong. Um, and, you know, we need to settle down. We need to calm this down now. We need to look Get off the refs' backs. Let them do their jobs. Then, after the game, if the performance is not good enough, then raise that. But do it in a constructive manner. Do it in a manner where you say the referee wasn't good enough today. He missed this decision. He missed that decision. And there's evidence, video evidence there to prove that he got it wrong. And I agree that standard refereeing is not being good so far. We do need accountability amongst referees. But we need to get away from this ridiculous pantomime, Yabu sucks crap that goes on around refs in the run-up to old firms it is getting beyond a bloody joke okay so let's turn now to scott wright everyone's favorite figure of hate everyone's uh everyone's uh, pantomime villain if you want if we're continuing the pantomime theme in april god only knows why we're talking pantomimes it's well past december january but hey you know what it's probably nearly Christmas. I don't know. Anyway, Scott Wright, Mr. Hamden Park. Now, he obviously is not every Rangers fan's cup of tea. Many Rangers fans think he's a 20-minuter. He should only play 20 minutes maximum of a game. Many Rangers fans think that when he starts, he contributes nothing. Some Rangers fans like Scott Wright. think he tries hard. He certainly divides opinion, old Scotty Wright. Now, Scott Wright has been speaking about the old firm game, the upcoming old firm game. And what he's had to say has, among some Rangers fans and among some Rangers sites, caused absolute outrage. Again, stating it's another example of Rangers players banging their gums together and making silly statements before the old firm. OK, let's look at what Scott had to say and let's make our own judgment on this. I, you know, look, I do agree that at times certain Rangers players in the past, like Fashion Takala, for example, last year, calling them that lot, etc., have given that lot, Celtic, a, you know, a bit of ammunition to use against us and have kind of, again, done their part talking off the pitch and not delivered 
on the pitch. And I think a lot of the problem around this social media, this commenting, this this talking is very much the fear that players are not delivering on the pitch and are then banging their gums off the pitch. And it's kind of like, shut your mouth, do it on the pitch. And I think a little bit of this may be because Scott Wright is not seen as being a particularly great player. And because of that, again, he gets the criticism. But let's have a look at the quote anyway. This is what Scott had to say. Let me, let, let, let's, let's run through this and then we'll, we'll unpick it a bit and unpack it a bit. And like I said, after I've read it and after you've heard it, I want your opinions. Get your opinions in the comments below. Is he right? Is he wrong? I've got my own opinion on this and you, you feel free to disagree with it. So he says, we are confident. I think we are in a good, right, good spot as a team in terms of momentum, the way we are playing. Sometimes these games are just a flash in the pan and it's a case of who wants it more. These games are always so important for us as a team and we know how much it means for the fans as well. So yeah, we will go into the game with confidence, take it as it comes. Okay, so that's the quote. That's the quote. Now, what people are object, what is so, you're, I know what you're asking. You're asking now is what are people objecting to? What is it about that quote, which is quite, you know, vanilla in a way, uh, you know, hasn't got any particular hatred or any particular in direct insults towards Celtic, you know, so you probably, you lot of you sitting there at home are thinking, well, what's the problem with that quote? This is, this is what fan groups around the uh, media, around the media world are kind of raising as objections to this comment. This confidence, this overconfidence, as they put it, and we're playing well right now. And some of them are not. Some of them are disputing that we're playing well. Um, you know, some of them are also saying that you know this talking about we're going to go in with confidence, we're playing with confidence, we're doing is just the wrong thing to say, and he needs to be more humble in what he says. Now, I've read this quote about ten times now, and I've read the article one of the articles on one of the Rangers fan sites about 10 times as well. I've got to say, I haven't actually got any problem or issue with what Scott Wright is saying. You know, what do you want him to say? That's the question. You know, if he's asked about how he's feeling ahead of the old firm game, what do you want him to say? You know, do you want to get him to go in with a very boring neutral answer? Like, oh, it's going to be a tough game. We're going to have to play our very best to win the game. That, that'd be it. Or, you know, Oh, Celtic, you know, it's been difficult against Celtic recently. You know, they've won a lot of the game, which is obviously starts off an openly very negative. Now, Scott Rice says we're very confident now. Well, look, I don't think that's particularly controversial because if you interview any of the players, if you talk to, you know, the captain, if you talk to any, any of the playing staff, Cantwell, Balogun, any of them, they all talk about being confident about the fact that Philippe Clement has come into this club and has given them a confidence. So I don't have any problems with him saying we're confident ahead of the game ahead and, and you know people say no he's kind of saying we're going to win this because we're so well no he's not saying that he's saying they're confident they feel they've got a good chance of winning it which again i don't see the problem with i'd rather the team go in with a positive can do can win mindset than a vanilla boring it one that, or a negative one he talks about the fact that the team is in a good place in terms of momentum well we are i mean if you think about where we were when Beale was sacked, seven points behind, second place, league's over, league's done and dusted, according to everybody's and everybody who's talking. And it's not now, it's very much in our own hands. I mean, we win our last win, let's face it, if we win all these last uh, eight games, and obviously then, you know, but I, I even draw one of them, the one at Parkhead, and win the rest, then we win the league. Again, I don't really see the problem with that. Um, Sometimes these games are a flash in the pan. It's a case of who wants it more. Yeah, it is. It is a case of who wants it more. Who wants to go out there and fight for the jersey, fight for the ball. Agreed. And in recent games, unfortunately, Celtic have wanted it more than us. Again, no problem with that. Uh, we know how much it means to the fans. Good. I'm glad he does. Uh, it's important for us as a team. Good. I'm glad it's important because there's obviously been that mental block in the past and that feeling that against Celtic, we've kind of lost the game before we even take the pitch. Okay. And we'll go into the game with confidence and take it as it comes. Again, don't have a problem with that. I, I, I genuinely think that some fan media groups and some fans genuinely just look for any sort of problem that they can find, that they look just to try and cause a bit of outrage, cause a bit of clickbait, cause a bit of um, sensationalism. And I think... Personally, my opinion, and you may disagree, and please feel free to disagree, I've got absolutely no issue with what Scott Wright is saying here. You know, he's he's talking about the team is confident, the team wants it, the team want to win. Good, I'm glad. 
I'm glad they're going in with a positive can-do mindset. I'm glad they're going with a mindset that this is a winnable game and they can do it and they can overcome it. I don't get the criticism. I genuinely don't get the criticism of what he's saying in this. Um, I know some people say, like I say, do it on the park and then talk. But what, what do you want him to talk? I genuinely don't get it. And, I, you know, you go and watch other teams players been interviewed, you know, down south, top top Premier League teams, and their players talk very much similar. And they're, they're not getting slagged off by their fans. I don't understand the criticism that Scott Wright is getting from some uh, websites and some media sources that obviously follow Rangers. Don't understand it. Yes, I don't think he's a good player, but what he says there makes a whole lot of sense to me. And like I said, I don't get the criticism one little bit. OK, let's move it along now to our final story. We're going to talk about Fabio Silva. Now, according to reports in a number of sources this morning, uh, Rangers have made contact with Wolverhampton Wanderers over agreeing a deal for Fabio Silva. This is what sources close to the club have said. Now, Fabio, who joined on loan, is not with an option to buy. No fee was agreed. No price was agreed as regards this option to buy. There is no option to buy. So that a deal would have to be done. Now, the Obvious first stumbling block is the fact that Fabio Silva costs Wolverhampton Wanderers £35 million when he moved from Portuguese Giants FC Porto to Wolves in the Premier League. And we know a part of that is the whole Wolves. Wolves have got their own fair share of FFP and issues over PSR going into next season. OK, there is definitely that issue there. There is a big issue there when it comes to PSR, to FFP, to all of those things. OK, so we know that. So there's, there's a thought uh, maybe within the club that they can get this silver deal done for slightly cut price, slightly cheaper. Now, he's made... Uh, seven starts and 15 total appearances for Rangers since he joined on loan um, and is going to be a big part, obviously, of our game on Sunday against Celtic. Now, the reports are that Rangers are seeking a cut price deal for Silva um, and have already approached Wolves uh, for negotiations over this. Now, all the media sources, though, that I am reading are casting massive doubts over the ability of Rangers to afford Fabio Silva. The even if we were to win, the, even if we win the league and go on to qualify for the champ and get into the Champions League and obviously have all that Champions League money, there's huge doubts that Wolves would accept such a cut price fee that Rangers would still be willing to accept. The talk of cut price, we're still talking in the region of 20 to 25 million, which would be cut price from the 35 million pounds, even 15 million, which is, which is under half, or even about 17 and a half, which is half the money for him is still, I think, way beyond what Rangers will have in terms of budget and want to spend, especially when you consider that we need a new left back, we need um, a new central midfield player, we need um, some wingers, we need a couple of centre forwards. You know, there's there's a lot of needs within this squad and within this team. And, you know, Abdallah Seam has been talked of, 7 to 10 million is another one they want to keep hold of. So I genuinely think they are going to struggle as a board, and as a club, to find... 15, 20, 25 million pounds for Fabio Silva. Plus, you know, his wages are huge at Wolves as well. I forget what he's on now, but it is definitely six figures. So I really cannot see this actually coming to fruition. I genuinely think that there will be a huge stumbling block and that will be money. Rangers will not want to blow the vast majority of its summer transfer budget on one player, especially when there are still so many needs within this squad. And even if we can raise money through some player sales, I mean, obviously, we won't get money from back from the likes of Jack and Roof and Barna Barisic, who will move on for free, probably. So, you know, yes, their wages get freed up, but, you know, they're still not going to add any value in terms of transfer fees. So I genuinely th I'm going to pour a whole lot of cold water on this story. I cannot see us getting silver. It just is very unlikely to happen, in my humble opinion. Guys, let me know again what you think in the comments down below. OK, guys, we're going to call that a video for today. We'll obviously be back on the pod later, so please come and join me for that. 
And can I just remind you, give this a song a listen. Damien Henry Blue is C on Spotify, on Apple Music, on YouTube. Absolutely awesome. Link is in the description. Check it out. Thank you for watching Glasgow Rangers Nation, guys. Please smash the sub, help the channel to grow. And on the way out, two things. That's right, two things I always ask of you. Number one, smash the like. Number two, please remember where we are. Let's get it right. We are the people.